This video is brought to you by a huge mountain of drugs. Felisa Fang of Silverquill versus Sisse, Krenko and the Ur Dragon. Uh, two lander, can't get down Orchid on turn two there. So, uh, yeah, I'd be tempted to keep this if it was a planes, but yeah, one mulligan. Okay, that's huh, looking really good. Skull Clamp with the Nether Traitor. Uh, we can get Nether Traitor out thanks to the fetch. So, turn one Sol Ring from Captain Sisse. They don't have white mana on a land yet, but maybe we can expect their commander next turn. Not interested in getting down Carrion Feeder on turn one because it is a combo piece and easy enough to drop. We draw into Ancient Tomb. Let's crack this for the tapped Snowland. Altar of the Brood for Krenko, which ought to be really good once the commander's out. Goblin Engineer from Sisse, still no white mana. And they search up a Coalition Relic, so likely going to try and get that with Goblin Engineer next turn. They'll need another artifact to do that though. Now, the aim here is to drop the swamp we just drew into. Uh, it'll be Nether Traitor this turn. Taser next turn off the Ancient Tomb, and then we can clamp the Nether Traitor and draw a bunch of cards, assuming that we don't get into anything else relevant. We will get the double Skull Clamp triggers with Taser in play, killing off the Nether Traitor, so that will be uh, uh, four cards for one mana and sacrificing a creature. Dragon Lord Servant for the Dragon Player, makes dragons cost one less. And we see a Skull Clamp from the Goblin Player as well, they get their first piece of red mana in Castle Embrith. The one thing I never want to do is throw down a Skull Clamp with nothing to equip it to. Seeing Lord Wingrace now, which he might be glad to see the Altar of the Brood, because we are getting some things milled now. Discarding a Gaia Reach Sanitarium to the Lord Wingrace. And we draw into Zillaport Cutthroat, so uh, yeah, let's just go for the plan of Tasa Karlov. This isn't my deck, by the way. I've literally only just discovered that um, Felisa is actually available on Magic Online. I think it came out in February, judging by the uh, uh, the the price graph, you know. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to quickly play a game with Felisa and didn't have a deck ready, so lifted this from someone else. Deck list is in the description. Looks like a decent list. Oh, I actually completely forgot about the shadow on Nether Traitor. I, this is part of a combo piece as well, but it's uh, a reoccurring. Um, creature so that you can keep skull clamping and yeah don't think of swinging in with it so shadow through to the Lord Wingrace is what I should have done there. Some more red mana as long as it's on goblins in a cavern of souls. It is goblin chieftain that is a 2-2 so should swing in at the Lord Wingrace. Deciding against swinging in shockingly though. Uh, yeah I don't know why they'd be worried about any swing back here. Grabbing Vesuva and that copies the Snowfield Sinkhole of ours, so they do have their white mana now. Got the Path of Ancestry for some colour fixing as well, which was milled. So got those back with the Lord Wingrace. Sisse, Weatherlight Captain, entering the fray. And that comes down as a 5-5, so now the damage from the Goblin, yeah, that can't get through anymore. Sacrificing the Sol Ring in order to get the Coalition Relic. And putting a charge counter on the Coalition Relic. Yeah, we need to be getting into some other stuff here, so let's do what I should have done last turn. We'll swing in with the Nether Traitor at Lord Wingrace, first of all. And then we could go Zillaport Cutthroat, and each opponent could lose a couple of life thanks to the Taser, but yeah, I'd rather see what we draw into. If we lose out on draining our opponents for two, then so be it. Throw out the Skull Clamp. Throw that on the Nether Traitor. We draw two cards twice, thanks to the Taser Karlov. And, alright, Anguished Unmaking, Esper Sentinel. We will trigger the uh, Knight of the White Orchid here, even if we drop a land, which we will have to. So let's throw out a Plains, throw out a Knight of the White Orchid. And that can grab us a Scrubland, so then we can go for Esper Sentinel. And we'll equip the Skull Clamp to the Knight, that is a First Striker. So that'll be a 3-1 with First Strike. And yeah, accelerated pretty well there. Nature's Embrace enchanting the island that they just went for. Goblin Vandal, and that does have haste. 
We did draw an Urborg from them casting the Nature's Embrace, by the way. Then it's a Lightning Bolt, and uh, okay, they've Skull Clamped their own Goblin, and they give us a Reliquary Tower. Um, yeah, Lightning Bolt in their own Goblin Vandal to switch on the Skull Clamp. That's uh, yeah, really clunky. You'd rather that had gone on the Lord Wingrace, in all honesty. But they managed to make a land, make a couple of lands. So Altar of the Brood continuing to mill us. I would keep the graveyards open, but Magic Online loves to randomly close them for some reason. Spotted a Life from the Loam in the bin of the Lord Wingrace player here. Uh, yeah, Life from the Loam is in the bin. Seeing a Voltaic Key from the Goblin player as well. And they have gone for the Mill, the uh, Dredge 3 on Life from the Loam, so grab some, uh, some shocks back there after casting Life from the Loam. Yeah, it looks like it's Lands Matters with a smattering of Planeswalkers. Ren and Seven into play now. Put any number of lands from hand to the battlefield tapped. So they go down to four cards in hand and get some shock lands in tapped. They've also got had this in play for a few turns, Cascading Cataracts. There's Core Haven, uh, Command Tower as well. Then ticking up on the Lord Wingrace. Uh, they discarded... Well, there's a Kiora in the bin. A Grist, the Hunger Tide, is what's just been discarded by Lord Wingrace, so it looks like it might be more Super Friends than Lands Matter. So I think we're going to have to get rid of the Sisse here. We're getting to another land. We're clearing a lot of lands away. Uh, play out the Reliquary Tower. Let's go for the Anguished Unmaking onto the Sisse straight away. Hopefully that will allow some of our opponents to start whacking these walkers. And then we'll go at Knight of the White Orchid into what gets the creature out here. That's a minus three, yeah, so I think we need to try and get rid of the Renan 7. Well, Wing Race is really scary as well, but I don't want to deal with that massive tree folk. So, leaving their goblin in play, they're going to allow us to hit Ren and 7. And then I think we're just going in for our Felisa here. Hopefully, no one will go for a board wipe, but we can start putting a plus counter on things with the Mentor, with our commander, so... Yeah, having a flyer in play as well against walkers is probably a good idea. Gilded Lotus, once again being played into the Esper Sentinel, so that has more than paid for itself in the card draw. Get another land in Khan's Bastion. Casting Balaged Recovery and grabbing back the Scourge of Valkus. Definitely seeing a goblin here, and it could be Krenko. Yep, yeah, going for Krenko mob boss. Only two goblins in play and three cards in hand. We lose our demonic tutor. I was hoping to get into a tutor so that we could put living death into our hand. I think living death is in this deck, and it'll be good with um, all the creatures that are being milled here. And not swinging in at the walkers. What are they doing over here? These... Two twos will survive against this, so you need to be taking Planeswalkers out. We could have had rid of Renan 7 here. Oh, uh, Cyclonic Rift overloaded. And uh, now it's going to be even more difficult to get rid of the Planeswalkers. We can hope that Goblin Chieftain can come in and get through some stuff, but... Yeah, we really need to be looking at um, Lightning Greaves and stuff. Luckily, we've got the Reliquary Tower. Did draw into Teferi's Protection there as well. Returning some lands with Lord Wingrace, so that goes down to two loyalty. Um, that was a Lotus Veil and a Shock, I think. And then Sacrificing Path of Ancestry and a Shock because of the Lotus Veil. Life from the Loam grabbing those lands back. Then it's any number of land cards with Ren and Seven. Goes perfectly well with the um, Life from the Loam. Down to two cards after that. And now playing a Jace Unraveler of Secrets. And it's Scry and Draw. <laughs> well, you'll never guess. We drew into another land. Uh, let's throw down the Command Tower. I want to... Yeah, we've got way less lands, so we'll go for the Knight of the White Orchid again. Which is doing some nice ramping for us. Just play the Godless Shrine and we will shock that in. Then it's Esper Sentinel and... I think it's playing Equip Skull Clamp after a Taser Karlov. Nature's Embrace again. Being cast and going on to the island. We are allowed to draw into our first bit of ramp, excluding the knight. And then going for Cultivate after that, so... Might be time to start worrying about the Ur Dragon soon. Thinking now, actually, I probably should have gone for Felisa first, so that we could start swinging in 
with the flyer sooner. Yeah, because Taser Karlov, we can drop it before we start making use of the um, Death Trigger stuff. Yeah, so that's a mistake on my part. Playing Altar of the Brood again, I don't think you really need to be concentrating on Altar of the Brood in all honesty. Obviously I don't know what's in their hand though, but I think they want to start littering goblins out and start dealing some damage. Been a very, very laid back Krenko deck. Alright, so we see the Goblin Chieftain again, no reason not to either get rid of this or get rid of one of the walkers. Seen Voltaic Key again, so just setting up exactly the same board they had. Must be running low on goblins. I'd attack Lord Wingrace here. Oh, for God's sake, really? God, it's infuriating. So we're not only <laughs> we're not only fighting an uphill battle against someone who's accelerating far ahead of us, but we're fighting an uphill battle against bad decisions here as well. Like, I'd, what are you worried about swinging in over here for? I uh, whatever. Okay, I don't get that. Poor threat assessment might lose us this one. Did get into vanishing verse though some point there, likely due to the Esper Sentinel, so that can get rid of Lord Wingrace for us. Hopefully it's not too little too late. Oh, I thought it was multicolored. It's actually mono-colored permanent, so we'll use it to get rid of Ren and Seven instead. I think they've dredged the Life from the Loam as well, because I'm not seeing it in the bin here. This graveyard keeps closing. And then we see uh, Tamio, Collector of Tales. Looks like they're paying the tax on the Esper Sentinel. And then returning a target card from Graveyard to Hand, uh, that was Carthal Lion, so that's the one that, I think it's plus one on the loyalty abilities, we'll probably see it here, four mana legendary creature, and there we see the Carthal Lion being cast, ETB trigger there, and it's the top seven cards, huh, revealing Nyssa, Vital Force, I don't think we've got Merciless Eviction in this deck for getting rid of walkers, but might be worth adding. So, casting that Nissa Vital Force now. May well get the emblem next turn. Oh, of course, they can get it straight away thanks to the plus one on the loyalty. Ugh. Yeah, so they've got an emblem now, which is Landfall. Draw a card from the Nissa Vital Force. And a creature did die there, so they got another trigger on the Karth, and that is Sarkin Unbroken now. Life from the Loam, grabbing some lands back. I'm not sure if they can actually play lands this turn. I'm not sure if they've played some already. But we'll start refilling their hand thanks to this emblem. I wonder if the goblin player's starting to see the walkers as a threat now. Discarding a card to Lord Wingrace. We do know that they've got a land in hand. Uh, they discarded... Is it Gaia's Blessing, the one that shuffles your graveyard into your library? Anyway, up to six cards in hand now. And then it's any number of cards with the Ren and Seven. Not worthy that they do have a Maze of Ith as well as the Core Haven now. Yeah, and that's four lands that they just got down, so Nyssa going to draw them four cards. Yeah, as scary as the emblem on Jace is, I wonder if we do have to get rid of Ren and Seven. Playing a land from hand, and again triggers Nyssa Vital Force. Then playing a Claws of Gix, they can sacrifice a permanent to gain a life. Scry one draw from Jace. Okay, let's see if we can get something that isn't a land here. Of course not. Well, I don't think we're going to combo off this turn anyway. Uh, so let's just drop the Orzhov Signet, play it for Lisa, and we'll get the Urborg down, potentially fixing mana for other players. And then Carrion Feeder, we're going to have to sacrifice the Knight of the White Orchid because we can't get through this now anyway. Might have to be that we just have to combo off against the, um, against the Planeswalker player, although it might be too late for that I think. Nether Traitor, we will pay Black Mana into that. Alright, got a Living Death. Uh, not sure how useful that's going to be. Yeah, if I had the mana, I'd set up the Living Death for my opponent and give them some dragons that won't have summoning sickness and they can start dealing with some of these walkers. We have to put Vanishing Verse on this because they've got the emblem next turn. Going to have to swing in with the Nether Traitor here and then I think I will Skull Clamp it. So let's go in at Ren and Seven, because I think it's a minus three on this, yeah. Uh, and then we can go Clamp, and I think I'm just going Vanishing Verse after this, but we'll see what happens during the next turn cycle. Going to draw four cards from the Clamp again, thanks to Taser Karlov. Alright, getting to Mana Crypt, we can play Plum the Forbidden. Uh, Vamp Tutor could be very handy. 
Yeah, I'm just glad we've got the living death available to us now. Um, let's play out the clamp, or the um, mana crypt even. And we can play Felwar Stone as well, which should be able to make all of our colours. And then was going to play out the Iron Apprentice, because we could sacrifice it, get an Inkling token, and then put a plus counter on Esper Sentinel so that we can draw more cards, but uh, I think I'd rather hold up the Vamp Tutor. So holding up Vamp Tutor and Vanishing Verse as well as Teferi's Protection as it stands now. And yeah, speaking of play mistakes around attacking into the Walkers, definitely should have had Felisa without Summoning Sickness that turn. It should have been Tasa that I played on my previous turn. Gilded Lotus being replayed into the Esper Sentinel. And it's yet another land for us. Yeah, just Dragon Lord Servant again. And then going for the Scourge of Valkus. So that is X damage to any target, where X is the number of dragons you control, which is, this doesn't count as a dragon. Nope, that'll just be one damage to something. Can't get rid of any walkers with that, unfortunately. Probably does it to the Esper Sentinel. Nope, does deal a damage to Lord Wingrace. And then they just decide to scoop, so... Yep, it's one of those games. Lotus Petal into Esper Sentinel. Surprisingly few goblins in this goblin deck. And we draw another land... Hobgoblin Bandit Lord. So, uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to get out Krenko, unfortunately. They can get out another Goblin or two, which I doubt we'll see. This damage might actually be relevant on here. Uh, okay, yeah. I mean, we didn't show them that we actually have an answer for that here. Uh, but they are targeting the Jace. They'll still get the Emblem, because it only costs 7 to get that, thanks to the Karth. Uh, yeah, so that really should have gone on. Renan 7 or Lord Wingrace, something else really. But in all fairness to them, they didn't know that we have the uh, removal for that. Then replaying that Skull Clamp again. And throwing the Clamp onto the Hobgoblin. If we can survive through another turn, then we might be able to get something going with the uh, Living Death. Um, I haven't actually filtered through the graveyard too much to see if we've actually got some kind of combo win we can get. Anyway, we'll go for Vanishing Verse onto the Jace. Like I said, this isn't my deck list. I've never actually played with Vanishing Verse. I don't really like that restriction of monocolor permanent. I'd rather just have Utter End, in all honesty. Um, yeah. So, a little bit disappointed with its performance, but it's not a terrible removal spell. I'd just rather always have Utter End in my experience. Is it Utter End? Is that the 4-mana one? I'm talking about the 2-mana one that can exile a 4-CMC or above permanent. I'll put it up on the screen, I forget the name of it. Now, time to see the Walker player go off here, I imagine. Realms Uncharted, likely going for Field of the Dead or something like that here. Esper Sentinel is going to trigger, looks like they're paying for it. Okay, they're targeting us with that, so I always get mixed up with this. An opponent chooses two of the cards, and the chosen cards go into the graveyard. Right, yeah, that's a weird way of doing it. Well, it doesn't really matter here, because they're going to get things back anyway, but I want Field of the Dead and Cabal Coffers to go into the graveyard. They've got Cabal Coffers online regardless. There was actually no need for them to search up Urborg there, because there's already one in play. And then returning two lands into play. No prizes for guessing. Cabal Coffers and Field of the Dead. And they're going to be getting card draw on landfall, don't forget. Obviously getting zombie tokens with Field of the Dead as well, so... Yeah, we need to really be trying to combo off next turn if we want to stand any chance. And then they have played their Urborg. Then Sisse, whether like Captain into play, they will no doubt be able to search for a bunch of stuff this turn. Probably get more emblems or ultimates with Planeswalkers. Activating Sisse. And they've grabbed themselves the Chain Veil, so it's a bunch of loyalty abilities this turn. Activating the Chain Veil as well, of course. So, any number of lands from the Renan 7. And the funny thing is, they'll be able to do this twice, because they'll no doubt draw into a bunch of lands here. Only getting two lands into play, one of which is Archway Commons. And then playing an Oath of Gideon. Following that up with Obnixilis Reignited. That comes in with 6 loyalty, can't quite get the emblem I don't think, so yep, going for the draw a card, lose a life. Oh, of course, but they've got um, the ability to do loyalty twice this turn, so yeah, they can get the emblem here. They just scoop on us, I don't think the goblin player was going to be of much use to us anyway. Yeah, pretty much all we can do here is hope that we can combo off next turn. A little bit more mill from the goblin player might have been nice, but I think they were tapped out. 
So we get the Obnixilis emblem. And all they really have to do is play a bunch of lands here because they'll draw a bunch of cards to the emblem and then we'll be shot for two per card they draw. They're going to draw two from Lord Wingrace here. So that'll be four life already. Seeing the uh, triggers going on the stack there, taking us down to 20. Then Renan 7, revealing the top four and putting all lands revealed this way into hand. That was a Sol Ring, Oath of Nyssa, a Kaya, and Sensei's top. Activating Sisse again. And they've gone for Teferi, Master of Time, so that is a loot. Which triggers the Obnixilis Reignited. Now, there we go, that'll do it. So, <laughs> yeah, a Time Twister is 14 cards being drawn, so that's 28 to us, so... Yeah, I'll put a combo up on the screen of what I might have been aiming for. I think we were going to be a piece away from comboing off there anyway. If we could have survived this turn, we might have been able to get something there, but I'm not entirely sure. I would have been stumbling my way through it. But that's good game to my opponent. I think we could have had rid of... Uh, uh, well, we could have definitely had rid of Renan 7 there. Uh, maybe Lord Wingrace as well, had I have had... Uh, the Felisa out a turn earlier instead of casting the Taser could have had some evasive damage gone on a walker there so some bad plays all round but it was cool to see the walkers go off there if you want to see more from Felisa then be sure to let me know I'm Tribal Kai on the EDH channel thank you for watching